tonight on Wine News. The World Health Organization declares the 2019 novel coronavirus a global emergency as the death toll rises to over 200. President Rodrigo Duterte issues an order to temporarily stop the entry of all Chinese nationals from China's Hubei province after health authorities confirmed the first case of the novel coronavirus in the country. Authorities begin tracking down the people who had come into contact with a Chinese woman who tested positive for the novel coronavirus. Experts see temporary disruption of world trade as the novel coronavirus scare continues. And Filipino fans pay their tribute to basketball legend Kobe Bryant with a massive mural of him and his daughter Gianna. Good evening. The new coronavirus has been declared a global emergency by the World Health Organization as the outbreak continues to spread outside China. But the Global Health Agency said it was not recommending limiting travel or trade to China. Kat Dumarao's details why. The World Health Organization, or WHO, declared the outbreak sparked by the coronavirus in China as a global emergency on Thursday after the number of cases spiked more than tenfold in a week while the death toll rose to 213. This developed as China's Health Commission reported on Friday that the confirmed cases of infection have reached 9,822. Another 102,000 people were also reportedly under medical observation with possible symptoms of the respiratory ailment. The UN Health Agency defines an international emergency as an extraordinary event that constitutes a risk to other countries and requires a coordinated international response. China first informed WHO about cases of the new virus in late December. 18 other countries have since reported cases as scientists race to understand how exactly the virus is spreading and how severe it is. Experts say there is significant evidence the virus is spreading among people in China and have noted with concern instances in other countries, including the United States, France, Japan, Germany, Canada, South Korea, and Vietnam, where there have also been isolated cases of human-to-human -human transmission. Speaking to reporters in Geneva, WHO Director General Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus noted the worrisome spread of the virus between people outside China. Our greatest concern is the potential for the virus to spread to countries with weaker health systems and which are ill-prepared to deal with it. Let me be clear, this declaration is not a vote of no confidence in China. On the contrary, WHO continues to have a confidence in China's capacity to control the outbreak. In the wake of numerous airlines canceling flights to China and several businesses have temporarily closed hundreds of shops, Tedro said WHO was not recommending limiting travel or trade to China. There is no reason for measures that unnecessarily interfere with international travel and trade. So WHO doesn't recommend limiting transfer uh, or trade and, and movement. He added that Chinese President Xi Jinping had committed to help stop the spread of the virus beyond its borders. The only way we will defeat this outbreak is for all countries to work together in a spirit of solidarity and cooperation. We're all in this together, and we can only stop it together. This is the time for facts, not fear. This is the time for signs, not rumors. This is the time for solidarity, not stigma. Meanwhile, Russia announced it was closing its 4,180-kilometer border with China, joining Mongolia and North Korea in bearing crossings to guard against a new viral outbreak. Beijing announced on Friday that it is sending charter planes to bring back citizens from Hubei who are overseas as soon as possible. This is in view of practical difficulties that Hubei citizens, especially those from Wuhan, have faced overseas. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue.
U.S. health officials confirmed the nation's first person-to-person -person transmission of the coronavirus. Meanwhile, the U.S. State Department increased its travel advisory for China as the death toll from a fast-spreading virus rose to over 200. Kath Carriedo details this report. The first U.S. incident of person-to-person -person spread of the new coronavirus that emerged in Wuhan, China, has been identified in Illinois. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, said on Thursday, the confirmed case brings the total number of U.S. patients infected with a fast-spreading virus to six. A man in Chicago caught the virus from his wife, a woman in her 60s, who returned January 13 from Wuhan, China. He recently began showing symptoms and was immediately hospitalized. This person-to-person -person spread was between two very close contacts, a husband and wife. The virus is not spreading widely across the community. The Illinois Department of Public Health said it is currently tracking 21 people who had contact with a couple. I want you to know that this new patient has been extremely helpful in sharing the details of his activities and contacts. We continue to gather information and clarify details, but we know already that just like his wife, he has not, for example, taken the owl. He has not attended any large gatherings. This news does not change risk to the general public, nationally, across Illinois, or in the Chicago area. It's not a local emergency. U.S. officials are working to contain the outbreak from spreading in the country, including by increasing travel warnings and expanding screening at 20 U.S. airports. Trump administration officials have said they are constantly evaluating the situation and could take more drastic action if needed. Health officials said Thursday that they still don't know whether the virus is infectious before symptoms. As of Wednesday, the CDC was monitoring 165 people across 36 states for the virus, including five patients who contracted the deadly infection in China and brought it back to the U.S. and one of the spouses. Kat Garriedo, UNTV News and Rescue, Chicago, USA. President Rodrigo Duterte issues an order to temporarily stop the entry of all Chinese nationals from China's Hubei province. But Vice President Lenny Robredo has different recommendation as well as other senators. Harleen Delgado explains why. President Rodrigo Duterte orders a travel ban on Chinese passengers whose point of origin is Hubei Province, China. The order comes a day after the Philippines announced its first confirmed case of 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease. According to presidential spokesperson and chief legal counsel Salvador Padelo, the travel ban will include other parts of China where there is spread of the disease. However, these will be identified upon the confirmation of the Chinese government and the World Health Organization. The palace spokesman says the travel ban will last until the threat is over. Senator Christopher Bongo has earlier said the government will study the possible travel ban on other areas affected by the new strain of coronavirus. The senator adds President Duterte will meet with medical experts and key government agencies next week to discuss necessary measures to prevent the spread of the disease. Disease. However, Vice President Lenny Robredo calls on the Duterte administration to impose a ban on all trips originating from China. Robredo also urges the government to give necessary support for Filipinos who are in the affected areas and even consider repatriation if necessary. Some senators support the call. Senator Risa Hontivero says a China-wide ban should now be implemented. Senate President Pro Tempore Ralph Recto says it is time to temporarily close the doors for visitors from China. He insists this is not an act of racism or xenophobia. Senator Joel Villanueva also appeals to the government to prioritize the safety and security of Filipinos over other considerations. The WHO declared yesterday global emergency due to the growing number of cases of the NCOV ARD. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue.
Several carriers have canceled their flights bound for China following President Rodrigo Duterte's order to ban the entry of Chinese nationals coming from Hubei province where Wuhan City, believed to be the ground zero of the Wuhan coronavirus, is situated. A travel ban on all Chinese nationals coming from other infected areas in mainland China is also in place. Joe Anando tells us why. Various airlines have submitted their letter to the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines and Civil Aeronautics Board to voluntarily suspend their flights to and from China amid threats of the 2019 new coronavirus. Several China-bound flights are catered in Kalibo International Airport, one of the seven international airports operated by Kaap Nationwide. Nag-declare or nag-request na sa amin, nag-inform sa Kap, uh, Kalibo Airport Authority kahapon, nag-start silang magbawas na ng flight at hanggang bukas, wala ng flight na manggagaling from China to Kalibo. Based on the record of the Civil Aeronautics Board, a total of 742 commercial flights and 351 chartered flights to and from China have been cancelled because of fears of the deadly virus. Actually, and dami ng cancellations. Ano? As we are talking, the, the figures are increasing. Uh, approved kami ng approved kasi siyempre, even the, the flights to other cities in China, are declining. So, and daming, I can give you the figure later, pero there is a steep decline in the number of flights, which is expected given the prevailing circumstances. Cebu Pacific Airlines has temporarily suspended some of its China-bound flights, including mainland China, Macau, and Hong Kong trips. Philippine Airlines has reduced flights from Kalibo to some parts of China. On the other hand, the Bureau of Immigration has intensified its screening process on passengers in Inoy Aquino International Airport following a confirmed 2019 NCOV case in the Philippines. Immigration officers are strict in checking the passengers' passports in order to identify their real point of origin. Authorities have also designated a special lane on which passengers with symptoms of the NCOV should pass through. Footbats are also in place to prevent the spread of the yet undetermined coronavirus. The Immigration Bureau has formed a special team that will assist Filipinos who will avail the voluntary repatriation from China. We prefer them to be different from a, maybe in a special tarmac. Hindi na po sila dadaan dito. Ang immigration officers na po, since it's going to be a special flight, uh, pupuntahan na po sila dun sa pag landing po ng aeroplano. Uh, meron na lang po siguro secluded area or place that they're going to, to stay kasi automatic po itong ikakwarantine din. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. The Department of Health continues to advise hand hygiene and use of face mask amid the 2019 novel coronavirus issue that has gone viral. Find out the proper way of hand washing and use of protective mask as Asher Kadapa Jr. reports. Our hands are prone to picking up viruses and other microbes, biorespiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes more than any part of our body. With the threat of the spread of the 2019 novel coronavirus or NCOV, the Department of Health strongly recommends the public to wash their hand as frequently as possible. We should uh, uh, be very conscious about personal hygiene, such as washing of the hands for 20 seconds. We recommend as often as you can. Uh, if not, if you have alcohol, you uh, apply alcohol uh, on your uh, uh, hands, on your palms, and then the cough etiquette. If washing the hands with water and soap is not possible, accessible alternatives such as hand sanitizer and alcohol are recommended. Paano siya ginagamit? Bigay, lagay ka lang sa bawat area, sa palad, sa likod ng palad, kabilaan, kaliwat kanan, tapos sunod natin yung mga kuko. Niikot lang naman yung hinlalaki at yung hintuturo which is ito yung madalas kasi magamit. Aside from hand washing, the DOH also recommends the use of face masks. It is better to use N95 masks, according to former Health Secretary and now Iloilo Representative Janet Garin, but surgical face masks are more commonly available in stores. But what is the proper use of a surgical mask? Hanapin mo yung area ng mask kung saan yung mayroong bendable. Ito kasi ang bandang sa upper part. 
sa upper part o sa may bandang ilong. Kung sa alin yung may kulay na part, yun yung mas malayo sa'yo. Then, gently, idikit sa ilong o sa bibig, saka isabit sa pagkabilang tenga. Itong nabibend na sa may ilong, ihulma mo to na parang sa humps. Dahil ito ay bendable, susunod to sa, sa humps ng ilong. The health department also advises people to avoid going to public places, especially when there is a high risk of getting infected with virus. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Alex Baltazar left off. I am William Theo, and here are the headlines. Authorities begin tracking down the people who had come into contact with the Chinese woman who tested positive for the novel coronavirus. Authorities warn trainers against hoarding masks and alcohol as novel coronavirus cases trigger panic buying. Several stores, even in some provinces, run out of supplies of N95 and surgical masks. Experts sees temporary disruption of world trade as the novel coronavirus scare continues. And some fisher folk in Alas As, San Nicolas, Batangas use window hours to retrieve their belongings and rescue livestock. Good evening. There are now 31 patients under investigation in connection with the 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease. Health authorities and other concerned government agencies continue to conduct contract tracing. Aiko Miguel tells us why. The number of patients under investigation or PUI in the Philippines has increased to 31 as of today. One of the PUIs expired last Wednesday. 25 are currently isolated and being treated in government health facilities. The health department confirms three of the PUIs are isolated in a health facility in Manila City. There are three PUIs admitted currently in San Lazaro. Uh, the two were uh, the couple uh, where we had the first uh, NCOV case and her partner, and a new case was admitted yesterday. The DOH explains it has this close information about the health facility where two suspected cases are being isolated, as well as a confirmed case of 2019 and COVID ARD to give factual information to the public. Because every other hospital in Metro Manila was panicking. And I think to put that uh, a lot of people to rest and just uh, be assured that they're not, nothing's being hidden from them. I, we thought it was better to disclose. And you know, San Lazaro Hospital is well equipped. They've been handling infectious cases for the 400 years. And everybody, of course, in the hospital knows that the patient is in there. So we found, I don't think there's any harm in disclosing. In fact, it puts to rest a lot of speculation. Contact tracing is also continuously done in cooperation with the Bureau of Quarantine for proper case management of passengers who took the same flight with a female Chinese who has tested positive for the 2019 NCOV ARD. Airline companies also continue to coordinate with the DOH about the flight those passengers took from Wuhan City via Hong Kong to Cebu and Dumaguete. Inalam namin kung saan at ano yung mga aeroplano sinakyan nila kung ano yung seat number kung saan sila nakaupo. Tapos, we will be contacting the people around the seat para mabigyan sila ng advice. Maliba doon sa aeroplano, tinitignan doon rin namin, tinitignan natin yung mga crew na nag-serve doon sa aeroplano. So, bibigyan din po natin yun ng advice. At maliba doon yung sa aeroplano, sa airport, at yung mga hotels na pinuntahan nila o mga restaurant na napuntahan para po ma-advise yung mga contacts na sinasabi natin. Meanwhile, with the World Health Organization's declaration of public health emergency of international concern, big hospitals are required to manage and never refuse patients with suspected cases of 2019 and COVID-ARD. Kung ang isang hospital ay may kapasidad para matugunan yung pangangailangan, mas, ma mas maigi pa pong hindi na ilipat yung pasyente. Ang importante lang ay makuha ng sila ng specimen para maitala sa RITM. Importante po yung infection control. Kung papalipat-lipat natin yung pasyente, mas mataas yung 
uh, posibilidad na maaaring makahawa pa sa, sa iba't iba. Kaya kung may lisensya kayo, may capability kayo, they are being reminded that they cannot turn away patients because of suspected alcohol that they have to treat them and manage them within the facility. Ay ko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Meanwhile, there has been a high demand for face masks nowadays. Some people, however, choose to find other alternatives as stores run out of stock. Bernard Dades tells us why. Since the Department of Health confirmed the first case of 2019 novel coronavirus in the Philippines, the demand for items that can be used for personal protection immediately spike. Many people can now be seen wearing a face mask on pedestrians and public transportation. Even street dwellers are wearing one. With such high demand for face masks, stores are running out of stock. Meron pong dumating nung nakaraang araw pero konti lang po, sag sag saglit lang din naubos agad. Wala na po eh, nagkakaubos na po dito sa Bambang. Subukan niyo pong mag-ikot? Opo, simula doon sa may Bambang Street hanggang dito sa may Alvarez. Nasabukan na po namin kaso wala na po talagang mahanap. Virgie and a fellow health worker went to Bangbang, Manila from Makati City just to buy surgical face mask or N95 face mask but failed. So, bali po may two weeks po kaming synchronized polio vaccine. Eh, kailangan din po kami po mga nag-work po sa field, nakamas din po para protektado rin po kami at rin po yung mga pausap din po namin. Each store has a sign board that reads, no more face masks available. With this situation, others choose to look for alternatives just to at least have personal protection. We saw some buyers flock to this store to buy face masks made of cloth. Each mask is worth 25 pesos. Wala kaming magbiling ganyan eh. So kasi sa walang gamitin? Oo, kasi kulang silang gamitin. Yung surgical mask kasi pila ka nang mahaba. Pagdating sa pagmalapit na sa pila mo, nagdi-declare na wala na. While Angel choose to buy dust mask used for construction for her children and family. Pinatulan na lang namin para pang ano din protection sa mga bata. Not only face masks but also hand sanitizer and alcohol are in demand. According to store owners, they not increase the price of alcohol and hand sanitizer. According to the Department of Health, they have distributed personal protection equipment to DOH and government hospitals. We are already coordinating with DTI, no? particularly uh, dun sa price freeze natin for the, for the face masks and mga kagamitan no, na kinakailangan at nagkakaroon ng costing scarcity ngayon. Of course, we're also coordinating with the suppliers to make sure that they bring in no, as much supplies here available. But still, no, we uh, ask the public to be very, very judicious in the use of these uh, materials. For example, the N95 mask, we want to reserve this for health workers who are actually handling cases, no, yung either PUIs natin or confirmed positive cases. Meanwhile, Manila Mayor Isko Moreno has ordered the distribution of facial masks in different schools in the city. More than 500,000 face masks have been repacked by the Manila Traffic and Parking Bureau personnel in the City Hall. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The world's problem on the 2019 novel coronavirus is seen to disrupt trade. It may also affect major Philippine-China projects. Ray Pelayo reports why. Former Trade Undersecretary and now Laban Consumer, President Attorney Vic de Magiba says the process of trading from China, especially of food, might get disrupted due to the tightened measures the Bureau of Quarantine has begun implementing. China is one of the top traders in the world. For one, the Philippines imports from China, garlic, onion, canned and processed goods, and products that use starch like noodles. Several herbal medicines also come from China. I guess talagang ano, may slowdown sa kalakalang export and import Philippines and China. Dimagiba believes major Philippine-China projects like the Kaliwa Dam might also be affected due to the limitations of manpower movement that will come from China. Hindi naman yung ipipigil yung proyekto. Uh, hindi delay lang yung 
ngayong project. No? So, but di magiba emphasizes, the Philippines can easily recover once the cure to the disease caused by the 2019 NCOV is found. As a rule naman ang global economy very resilient eh. Uh, kapag uh, naka-recover na in the sense na under control na yung epidemic na yan, uh, papawi din talaga ang ating economy. No? But if the situation gets worse and the virus widely spreads, it is also possible that the Philippines cannot withstand it. That includes the need for face masks, whose major volume of import also comes from China. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. 18 countries have confirmed cases of the 2019 novel coronavirus. What are these countries and what are the numbers as of today? Mirasol Abugadil reports. The number of confirmed cases of the 2019 novel coronavirus in different countries continues to swell. According to data from the World Health Organization, as of yesterday, January 31st, there are 7,818 confirmed cases globally. Majority of the infected victims are in China, which account for 7,736. This number includes 10 cases in Hong Kong, 7 in Macau, and 8 in Taipei. From China and its territories, the virus has spread to 18 other countries. In Japan, there are 11 confirmed cases, 4 in South Korea, 2 in Vietnam, 10 in Singapore, 7 each in Australia and Malaysia, 1 each in Cambodia and the Philippines, 14 in Thailand, 1 each in Nepal, Sri Lanka and India, 5 in the USA, 3 in Canada, 5 in France, one in Finland and four each in Germany and the United Arab Emirates. Of the 85 confirmed cases outside China, four do not have a travel history in China since December 2019 when the outbreak started. Two visited undisclosed location in China and 43 went to Wuhan city where the virus first manifested. Of the 18 countries outside Chinese territories with confirmed 2019 coronavirus cases, 12 reported that their first case involves Chinese citizens. As for others, it is their own citizens with travel history to Wuhan city. Because of the rapid spread of the 2019 NCOV outside China, governments implemented several steps to counter it. Russia, though still free of the virus, closed its borders with China. Russian tour operators also refrain from selling packages to Chinese citizens. Meanwhile, some airline companies based in North America, Europe and Asia have suspended flights to and from places in China most affected by the novel coronavirus. The United States also advised its citizens not to travel to China because of the danger. Different governments like Australia, China, US and Germany are running against time to develop a vaccine against the new strain of coronavirus. According to China, they have successfully acquired two virus strains from sputum samples of patients which have provided the basis vaccine development. It takes process to develop a vaccine. The seed strain is now cultivated through cell strain, so it will take a month to obtain the vaccine strain. After that, it needs half of a month to test it and at least another month and a half for final approval. 213 people have died because of the 2019 NCOV, but all of them are in China. Mirasol Abugadi, UNTV News and Rescue. In other news, some residents in an ash-laden barangay in Batangas take advantage of the window hours implemented by authorities. Jun Soria reports why. Though the threat of another eruption of the Daal volcano remains, some residents of Barangay Alas As, San Nicolas Town in Batangas still prefer to go back to their homes during the window hours allowed by authorities, just like Rolando Umali's family, who has been staying in an evacuation center in Balete, Batangas. Rolando has lost his livestock, all except the cows. Ang kabayo ko yun, ma. Wala na rin ako, ha, pa. Mm -hmm. Yung mga baboy. Mm -hmm. 
Labintatlong ko yun, Harbisin. Wala na rin natira. According to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or FIBOX, they do not allow residents to go back to Pulo or the Taal Volcano Island, although the volcano's alert level has been lowered to 3. Napaka mapangani bumalik ng Pulo sa mga panahon na ito. Uh, kung tayo po ay kailangang may i-rescue na halagang hayo, makipag-coordinate lang po tayo sa Coast Guard ng Pilipinas. Residents grab the opportunity to check on their houses and livestock during window hours, crossing the lake from the mainland to the island. They salvage what they can, fish nets, boats and other fishing equipment to have something to start anew with, if not on the island, somewhere else. What's important, Rolando said, is that everyone in his family survived the calamity and they are together wherever the situation may lead them. As simple as sinigang and grilled tilapia make the family happy amid a dire situation or whatever awaits them ahead. Jun Suriao, UNTV, News and Rescue, San Nicolas, Batangas. An evacuee calls for help from authorities find her son that has gone missing since the eruption of the Ataal volcano this month. She says her son might have been buried in their house during the eruption. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. A woman approached UNTV News to ask for help in finding her missing son, who was last seen a day after the eruption of the Taal volcano on January 13. Marilyn Literal, her husband and seven children, live in Barangay Alas As on San Nicolas, Batangas. This is one of the barangays located on the Taal Volcano Island. Marilyn recalls that her 26-year-old son was not with them when the Taal Volcano erupted. Marilyn and her other children evacuated the island without Marlon. When they arrived in an evacuation center, someone told her that her son Marlon returned to the island to maybe check on them. But Marlon opted to stay in their house despite the situation. Kasama, sabi daw ay ano, sumakay na sa bangka, ay hindi naman po naniniwala na puputok ang vulkan. Pagkatapos po naghiwahiwalay na po yung tatlo. Yung, tatlo, yung isa po ay nakaligtas. Nung lon, lonis po yun, yung tracing. At naiwan yung dalawa doon? Naiwan po ang dalawa. Marilyn has tried to report her concern to authorities. But three weeks has passed, yet there is still no news on Marlon's whereabouts. Despite having a heavy heart, Marilyn has already accepted the worst possible outcome that might have happened to her son Marlon. Ako sana po matulungan niyo po ako na ma mahukay po ang aking anak doon sa alas as po. Hanggang ngayon po hindi pa po nahuhukay. Siguro po nadaganan po siya sa bahay namin dahil po bumalik siya doon dahil tiningnan po kami. Eh, eh wala na po kami doon. UNTV has reported the incident to the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council. The Office of Civil Defense Calabarzon Region will conduct an investigation together with authorities on the whereabouts of Marlon. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Batangas. The Philippine National Police Chief orders strict campaign against illegal gambling nationwide, starting with video carrera machines. Leia Ilagan explains why. The Canton City Police District destroyed 56 units of video Carrera machines in Camp Caringal this morning. PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa says he wants to destroy the same quantity of video Carrera machines weekly to solve the country's problem on illegal gambling. Uh, gusto ko sana yung destruction na yun. We do it every week. No? Hanggang sa maubos lahat. Uh, and please help us. No? We're encouraging the community to help uh, report to the PNP sa mga kapulisan kung meron pa kayong nakikita and uh, this will be relentless. And this is not only for Quezon City, this goes uh, nationwide. Gamboa also orders the arrest of all those who use his name in illegal gambling operations. Hulihin nyo lahat. No? Uh, wala akong inutusan, wala akong kinumisyon. I want to make that clear. Last week, Gamboa warned the QCPD director for persistent illegal gambling activities in Quezon City. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City.
Welcome back to Y News. Pharmacies and medical supply stores in some provinces have also run out of supplies of surgical and N95 masks. Some customers even bought in bulk in Davao City. Dante Amento tells us why. Several stores and pharmacies in some provinces have also run out of supplies of face masks and N95 masks. Such in the case in Cabanatuan City, Nueva Ecija. Here, residents including students and employees have rushed to medical stores to avail protective masks. But at this time, face masks are no longer available in some parts of Nueva Ecija. In Apalit, Pampanga, many stores have posted signs to inform customers they have run out of stock of face masks. Even in San Fernando City and Mabalacat City, face masks are no longer available. Sobrang dami kasi halos students, ganon. Yung iba naman po, sabi kasi pinapadala sa kamag-anak nila abroad. In Laguna Province, face masks had already been in demand since the Taal volcano erupted. The demand went higher when the first 2019 NCOVI patient was confirmed by authorities. Kahapon lang po. Kasi nung inannounce kasi na yung NCOV, nagbilihan kasi sila dito eh. Marami. Bali mga kanina, out of stock na po kami. In Naga City, this medical store sold out its N95 mask today. It limited its sale to every customer. So, for every person na binibigay namin, 10 pieces lang ang pinakang mataas na binibigay namin na N95. Pero yung sa ibang company, hindi talaga kami nagbibigay ng mas marami. In Calibuan Clan, there are no more face masks or N95 masks available for sale. Customers included employees from Calibu International Airport. Wala na, kahapon pa naubos. After namin na-pick up sa terminal, kahapon, wala na, out of stock na rin. Sa Calibu Airport talaga yung bumibili. In Cebu City and Davao City, pharmacies also ran out of supply. Some customers even bought in bulk. Local stores say even their suppliers have also run out of stock. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The government continues its call to the public to observe precautionary measures to avoid diseases. But what are the areas and objects that are prone to contamination and may cause infection? Harleen Delgado reports why. With the ongoing threat of the 2019 novel coronavirus acute respiratory disease or ncov ARD, the public is urged to take necessary precautionary measures. Everyone is advised to keep distance from people who are showing symptoms of the disease. It is also advisable to keep away from public spaces as well as objects that may easily get contaminated. For one, public mass transportation. Should an infected person who has respiratory droplets on his or her hands touch the railings and other parts of the vehicle, it is likely to infect other passengers. <coughs> Gyms are also at risk. Sports equipment are also at risk of getting contaminated if used by an infected person. <coughs> Paper bills and coins may also spread the disease. Public toilets and even the doorknobs of doors and railings of stairs may also be a point of transmission. In offices, computer keyboards are also at risk of spreading the disease. That is why it is very important not only to wash hands regularly, but also to sanitize both indoors and outdoors. As simple as this can actually impact greatly for your own protection and that of others. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. And for the news abroad, 6,000 people on board a cruise ship in Italy have been allowed to disembark after being placed in a total lockdown. Meanwhile, face masks have been sold out in Thailand as the coronavirus fears rise. Kath Dumaraos details why. Concern over the spread of coronavirus has triggered a huge rise in purchases of face masks in Thailand, with some pharmacies now saying they are out of stock. 
Staff at the Yanung Pharmacy in Bangkok confirmed that they had sold out of face masks on Thursday, adding that many of the buyers had been Chinese nationals. Signs were seen on display on Thursday outside pharmacies in Bangkok, telling customers that N95 face masks and alcohol gel were out of stock. However, Thai Deputy Prime Minister and Commerce Minister Jurin Laksanawisit said the production capacity for the masks was still enough to meet domestic demands. Thailand has seen 14 cases of coronavirus, more than any country outside China, which has confirmed nearly 6,000 cases. All but one of them have been among Chinese visiting Thailand, a popular tourist destination. Meanwhile, more than 6,000 tourists will be allowed to disembark from a cruise ship moored in an Italian port after a suspected case of coronavirus was confirmed false on Thursday. Samples taken from a Chinese couple were sent for testing after three doctors and a nurse boarded a Costa Corosiera ship near Rome to tend to a woman running a fever, local health authorities said. The passenger was a 54-year-old woman who had boarded Costa Crociere company ship Costa Smeralda on January 25 in the port of Savona. She came down with fever and flu-like symptoms. Both she and her partner were placed in an isolation unit on the ship. The ship had earlier been placed in a total lockdown. In a statement, Costa Crociere said its priority was to guarantee the health and safety of guests and crew and that it would strictly comply with regulations from health authorities. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. U.S. Customs and Border Protection released footage of what it says is the longest yet discovered cross-border tunnel running between the United States and Mexico. The video taken when the tunnel was first discovered by Border Patrol agents and their law enforcement partners in November 2019 was filmed by an official walking through the tunnel while an alarm sounds a warning of low oxygen in the subterranean passageway. Customs and Border Patrol said the tunnel is 1,313 meters long, far exceeding the previous cross-border tunnel length of 904 meters. Dozens of drug tunnels have been found traversing Mexico's border with the United States during its decade-long war on drugs. Meanwhile, a new telescope in Hawaii takes aim at our nearest star, the sun and its mysteries. Ferdi Petalio has this story. Images from a powerful new telescope installed on top of a volcano in Hawaii show the surface of the sun in the closest detail yet revealing features as small as 30 kilometers across. They were captured by the National Science Foundation's Daniel K. Inui Solar Telescope, which sits at around 10,000 feet above sea level, near the summit of Haleakala Volcano in Maui, Hawaii. The telescope, which features the world's largest solar 13-feet mirror, could enable a greater understanding of the sun and its impact on our planet. According to the National Solar Observatory, a public research institute headquartered in Boulder, Colorado. A pattern of turbulent boiling gas is shown covering the sun, which is some 93 million miles from Earth. Inside visible cell-like structures, each around the size of the U.S. state of Texas, hot plasma can be seen rising before cooling off and sinking below the surface in dark lanes, as part of a process called convection. Markers of magnetic fields are also visible with new clarity, the NSO said. Studying the sun's activity or space weather can help scientists predict problems on Earth. Magnetic eruptions on the sun can disrupt satellites, disable GPS, impact air travel, bring down power grids, and cause blackouts. Ferdi Petalio, UNTV News & Rescue. What used to be existing only in the world of science fiction will be made possible through the first ever international jet suits race on a British island territory. Nina Armilio tells us why. Gravity Industries today launches the first international jet suit race series with its maiden location in Bermuda. On March 21st, Gravity will deliver the never-seen-before spectacle on the island in partnership with Hamilton Princes and Beach Club. 
hosted at the Princess Marina with world-class facilities for vessels of up to 500 feet or more, the race will entertain a live audience on the ground and will also be streamed to global fans online. The competing pilots will come from the Gravity team to include some Gravity Flight Club alumni who have trained with the team. Spectators await scenes that would only have previously existed in the world of science fiction. Each pilot will lay down individual qualifying lapse times before moving on to paired head-to-head -head contests. The grand finale race just before Saturday sunset will see the four fastest pilots race for their podium positions and to take the win. The race series has been carefully curated by Richard Browning, founder and chief test pilot at the Gravity team. Gravity Industries will also take the series to locations and audiences around the globe in the future. Gravity will also be hosting a children's STEM day, sponsored by the Bermuda Civil Aviation Authority, making the Saturday race event completely open to the public. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. Filipino fans joined the entire basketball world in mourning the death of NBA legend Kobe Bryant after he and his daughter were among the nine passengers killed in a helicopter crash in the Santa Monica foothills near Calabasas, California, United States on Sunday. Details in this story. Filipino fans painted a giant mural of late basketball star Kobe Bryant together with his daughter Gianna inside the neighborhood basketball court in Manila as tribute to the late sportsman. Fans painted the picture in order to pay tribute to Bryant, both as an athlete and as a father. They started painting the mural on Monday and completed it overnight. I cried right away, I cried right away. So it still feels like that, you know. You, know, you, know, you feel like you, you, you lost a part of the family, you lost a brother, a mentor, an idol, a hero, someone that I've watched probably almost daily since the 90s. So you feel like you lost a part of you, man, you know. Basketball is one of the Philippines' most popular sports, with makeshift courts popping up appearing in many neighborhoods and children frequently seen playing on the streets. Hindi lang sa pagiging isang sikat na basketball player, namin siya tinitingnan. But tinitingnan din namin siya as a father, na up to the last minute, we, we are sure na ginawa niya yung pagiging tatay niya. Doon sa moment na alam nila that something will happen to them, so we created this uh, mural, a very emotional mural, na maramdaman ng mga tao na he is not only a great basketball uh, star, but he is also a great father. Meanwhile, hundreds of members of the Movistar Estudiantes Basketball Youth Program were joined by the Spanish club's ACB League players to pay tribute to Kobe Bryant. The Estudiantes Movistar players sat in the formation of number 24, Bryant's number on the basketball court. Bryant rocketed to fame as an 18-year-old rookie and played 20 years for the Los Angeles Lakers. Nicknamed the Black Mamba, he was named in the NBA All-Star team 18 times and won five NBA championships. Alex Baltazar, UNTV News and Rescue. UNTV employees had a thrilling adventure-filled weekend and had a bonding time with one another and with CEO Kuya Daniel Razon away from the city. Mon Hoxon details why. UNTV News and Rescue concluded the year 2019 with public service to our fellow men. And with the start of a new year, UNTV is gearing up for more public services and projects in line with its advocacy. To prepare for what's ahead, all its employees went through a team-building activity led by no less than BMPI President and CEO Kuya Daniel Razon.
ginagawa natin ang kick-off rally natin every year, ano? At sinusunda natin niya ng mga town hall meetings every now and then within the year para basically ay muling i-reiterate ang directions na ating gustong marating, puntahan, ang goals natin at yung mga nagawa na natin in the past, nasaan na tayo, yung state of the network natin at uh, yung mga bagay na dapat nating bilisan, yung mga bagay na kung saan ay nagkukulang tayo, saan tayo dapat magdagdag, yun ay isa sa mga uh, dinidiscuss natin sa mga ganitong kick-off rally as well as ating uh, muling uh, binubuhay yung uh, pagtutulungan, yung ating uh, mga values na gustong uh, ma-achieve sa mga empleyado natin. Pagkakaisa, yung collaboration, at ngayon yung efficiency and effectiveness, at uh, yung ating uh, teamwork. The team building event consisted of different challenges designed to enforce teamwork. sa horizontal spider web. So, ang, ang aim nito ay makatawid sila dito sa spider web na to nang hindi nagriring ang bell. That means kapag nagring ang bell, na-touch nila yung pinaka web. So, again, kailangan gawin nito ng maingat at ganun din ay may coordination yung magkakasama na papasok doon sa loob ng spider web. It's uh, identifying the problem and finding solutions on how to solve the problem together as a team. So, teamwork, collaboration is very important. A battle of production numbers from each team also took place. Kuya Daniel also gave recognition to employees that showed extraordinary dedication and perseverance in their work. The employees shared what they learned from all the challenges they went through that involved climbing, running, driving, cheering, and cooking. Sobrang sulit po nung pagod, nung kuyat. Kasi sobrang dami po namin natutunan po bilang part po ng company. Mas lalo po namin napili yung uh, pagtutulungan bilang family kung paano po tutulungan yung isang mahina. Kapasalamat din po kami sa, uh, syempre po sa ating uh, mga head sa BMPI. Kasi po, bibihira yung company na mag-aalat ng ganitong kalaking event para uh, pagsamasamahin para mas mapatibay yung relationship and before the day ended kuya daniel delivered an inspiring message to all the employees sana ay magkaroon ng kamalayan sa atin o magkaroon tayo ng kaisipan na kung ano yung nakita natin mali maguhin natin kung ano yung attitude na naging attitude natin towards doon sa mga task na ginawa natin mag reflect tayo Yun ba ay nadadala ko sa trabaho ko? Is that how I am? Pagka nagtatrabaho na. Uh, and tandaan natin mga kasama, ang umpisa ng pagbabago ay nasa pagtanggap ng pagkakamali. At 
realization na may dapat tayong baguhin. Kung hindi natin nare-realize na may dapat tayong baguhin o hindi natin tinatanggap na mayroon tayong dapat na baguhin, meron tayong attitude na towards work na dapat natin i-adjust, it will never be changed. Hindi yun mababago. Kaya sana, ma-realize natin mga kasama na we work in a company at sa kumpanyang pinagkatrabaho natin, what is important is that ma-survive natin ang buong kumpanya ng tama, ng maayos, na ang bawat bagay na pwede natin maibahagi ay ibahagi natin. Find out more about the team building with Kuya Daniel on KDR TV YouTube channel. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this January 31st, 2020. On behalf of Alex Baltazar, I am William Theo because we need to know we will always ask why. Good evening.